great to be here in New York, as well as to be joined by the tens of thousands of people that are watching this event streamed online. You know, as Santi just talked about, we're in the midst of uh, a massive growth in the amount of data that's being generated in the world. You know, whether it's with the cloud, whether it's with new applications, IoT devices, and more, uh, there's never been more data than there is today. And the emergence of this data uh, really enables a fundamental leap in our ability to build smarter businesses and to get things done. And advances of the scale you know, really have only occurred a very few times in history. You know, I thought I'd start by just telling you a story about you know, one such fundamental leap that really transformed the world in a pretty big way. Uh, if you think back you know, uh, hundreds of years ago, you know, things like simple arithmetic uh, and you know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, is com comparatively speaking to something like reading, a, a relatively new skill. Uh, and prior to the 1200s, you know, the basic knowledge of arithmetic and the ability to do even rudimentary calculations was something that only a small academic community was able to do. And merchants uh, and people who did commerce literally counted on their fingers uh, and using abacuses to do very basic sums. And more advanced things like interest rates and exchange rates you know, were out of the realm of, of possible for pretty much everyone out there. And all this changed in just two generations. Uh, and within this short time span, uh, literally, you know, basic math, which was not in existence before, became understood by pretty much everyone. And what happened? Well, you know, in 1236, uh, a scholar uh, from uh, Italy uh, basically cobbled together mathematical knowledge from all over the world, you know, from China, from North Africa, from India, from Persia, uh, and more, and, and basically put together this knowledge into an exhaustive 600-page book. And this book really changed the world. And you know, why was it so impactful? Uh, it was partly because of the intended audience um, for it. And what he did was he basically um, you know, took this book and in 600 pages kind of walked through the common scenarios and stories of every conceivable transaction and business scenario. And you know, rather than writing a book for academics, he really kind of tried to write it so that everyone could understand it uh, and could be really used as a manual for the commercial class. And mathematics, which was once you know, just a very few elite understood from an academic sense, was suddenly something that every merchant and every business could now use to interact with others. And the scholar's name was Fibonacci. Uh, and with very little fanfare, you know, he basically placed these cutting edge, nearly theoretical concepts into the hands of millions of people. And as a result, the entire Western world, you know, not just businessmen, became mathematically literate in just a few years. And today we're witnessing you know, a similar growth uh, and similar period of disruption, uh, this time with data. And massive amounts of data and the ability to understand and pre even predict the future based on that data, uh, which were practices that only a very few large companies or only uh, well-funded academic institutions were able to do even 10 or 15 years ago, uh, is now accessible by everyone. And at Microsoft, our mission is really around how do we kind of enable you to take advantage of that disruption and navigate it? And how do we enable every business to basically be the disruptors within their respective industries? And we're making it possible uh, with our products for you to kind of engage and interact with data in these fundamental new ways, uh, to be able to do it on premises as well as in the cloud, and to be able to do it in a really high performant and super secure way. And we're here today. Uh, to celebrate and launch SQL 2016 and to talk to you about how that product in particular is super well positioned to be at the forefront of this disruption. Uh, we've invested heavily to kind of empower you with the access to the technology uh, that not very long ago uh, was you know, something, again, only a very few people could take advantage of. And with SQL 2016, we're really looking at how do we democratize that and enable every organization as well as to enable every department or every developer or every DBA inside that organization to be able to harness that power and really derive a tremendous amount of insight uh, from that data and be able to take intelligent action based on it. And the industry is really taking notice. Um, you know, Microsoft's now featured as the unparalleled industry leader in Gartner's most recent Magic Quadrant for Operational Database Management Systems, uh, which was released just this past December. Uh, we're cited now for the completeness of our vision um, for our customer and partner ecosystem, as well as for our ability to execute. Uh, we're also now uh, the leader 
in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for Business Intelligence and Analytics platform, which was released just last month. Uh, in fact, we actually now hold leadership positions uh, in other, many other cloud and data-focused Gartner Magic Quadrants, including data warehousing and advanced analytics. Uh, and you know, the great thing about SQL Server 2016 is it, it provides all of this capability uh, built in into one product. SQL 2016 really provides a complete data platform and brings with it major, major improvements, uh, not only in terms of capabilities, but also the cross-cutting support in terms of security, performance, mobility, advanced analytics, and much more. Um, you know, as Gartner and others have, have, have noticed, you know, Microsoft is now the most secure database out there. Uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology uh, keeps track of every vulnerability that comes out in a database. And according to their measurement, we've had the least number of vulnerabilities of any database or any vendor for the last six years in a row. Uh, and built into this new SQL 2016 release, as you'll hear this morning, we have fundamental new security capabilities uh, that enable always encrypted, whether on the data, through flow, or even in memory, uh, that it takes that security to the next level. SQL 2016 uh, also brings with it huge performance improvements. Uh, in fact, SQL uh, Server now uh, has, um, and again, can be used for OLTP workloads, for BI workloads, and in particular with data marts and data warehouses. Uh, we now have the number one, number two, and number three TPCH benchmark in the world. Uh, with SQL 2016, uh, we've also significantly enhanced our BI and reporting services capabilities. Uh, and this means that now, out of the box, you can now publish modern reports uh, to any device, including iPhones, iPads, Android, Windows phones, et cetera, all at a fraction of the cost of any competitive solution. Uh, and with SQL 2016, we now support in-memory advanced analytics, uh, enabling you to operationalize predictive analytics uh, directly off of either your OLTP or your data warehouse workloads, and do so using R, which is the leading uh, open source uh, data science language now in the industry. And we deliver all these capabilities with a consistent and a high quality experience that basically uh, spans across both uh, on-premises and cloud-based environments. Uh, in fact, SQL Server is the only data platform today that is available in a consistent way, both as an on-premise product as well as a database as a service product that you can take advantage of in the cloud. Uh, and this consistency enables a bunch of things, not just from a feature set perspective and a capability perspective, uh, but also it allows us, as we've built our product, to really change how we develop it, uh, to really take advantage of the cloud, to build a fundamentally even better product that we can also release on premises. Uh, in fact, the same core database code uh, that we're delivering as part of the SQL 2016 release that you can run inside your own data centers has been powering our SQL database as a service offering running inside Azure, which basically powers more than 1.4 million databases running in production uh, on a day in and day out basis. And it's been doing that for over a year. And that means that a lot of these new capabilities in SQL Server 2016, uh, both core uh, relational engine updates, but also new features like always encrypted, like row level security, have already been run in Azure by literally hundreds of thousands of customers across trillions of database queries and operations for over a year. And this really enables, you know, we think the, the strongest uh, release of SQL we've ever released and the most battle-tested and battle-hardened release uh, that we've ever delivered. And, you know, our commitment is how do we deliver all of these capabilities uh, with the lowest total cost of ownership of any vendor? Uh, and unlike other database vendors, we don't charge separately for all these things I mentioned. Uh, things like BI, things like data warehousing, things like advanced analytics, things like mobile capabilities are now just built in directly into SQL 2016. Uh, and you know, SQL 2016 now delivers 11.7x TCO benefit over a comparable Oracle solution. Uh, and if you're a large customer with hundreds of servers uh, running uh, inside your data centers, uh, you can imagine um, you know, the tremendous cost savings and value you can get uh, by converting those database servers uh, to SQL Server. And a little later today, Judson Altos will go into more detail about uh, this, these particular comparables and some of the great things you can do with it. And what we're finding is as more and more customers are switching uh, their data, core database platform to leverage SQL Server, one of the asks that we've had from a lot of people is, can you also enable it so that I can run 
uh, SQL Server on the existing operating systems or the existing servers that I already have. Uh, and this week, one of the big announcements we made uh, was that we're going to bring SQL Server to run not just on Windows Server, but also now on Linux as well. Uh, and the private preview of SQL Server on Linux uh, is available starting today. Uh, and we're looking forward to working with the community, with our partners, and most importantly with our customers uh, to bring it to market. And we're targeting uh, mid-2017 uh, to release it. And we think this sort of example of bringing SQL Server to Linux uh, is just another example of how at Microsoft, really across all of our products and portfolio, we're really trying to bring our offerings and our services uh, to a broader set of users and really make sure that we're meeting uh, our customers with where they're at. You know, from startups and born in the cloud companies uh, to the world's uh, leading enterprises and brands, you know, organizations from really around the world are using SQL Server and the Microsoft Data Platform to disrupt industries using data uh, and to fundamentally run their businesses in new ways. And data is enabling these organizations to engage better with their customers, to run their businesses more efficiently, and ultimately transform their products and services. And what I'd like to do today is invite three great companies on stage to share their stories about how they're doing this with SQL Server and with our broader data platform. You know, let's first hear um, from a company who's disrupting the already well-established notions of what's possible with digital content. Uh, they're achieving this uh, using SQL Server as well as Azure and our core data platform uh, running in the cloud. And along the way, they've become one of the fastest growing startups in the technology sector. And what I'd like to do is show a video uh, of them telling their story. DocuSign's mission is to make business digital. We help organizations build end-to-end -end transaction processing that's entirely digital, that has no paper involved, no fax machines, no filing cabinets. More than half of the agreements signed with DocuSign are completed within an hour, and more than 80% are completed within a day. I remember when I bought my home, I was buying groceries and getting things done on the go. I signed those agreements while I was in line at the supermarket. We in part got the deal done because we simply got it done faster than everybody else. Customers choose DocuSign because they trust DocuSign. And we picked Microsoft because we trust Microsoft to deliver secure software for our environment. As you'd probably expect, banks are incredibly trust conscious. In financial services, 10 of the 15 largest banks in the United States are DocuSign customers and over 1,000 credit unions use us every day. And 13 of the 15 largest insurance carriers in the United States are DocuSign customers. We picked SQL Server as our platform because, frankly, we trust it. We facilitate customers extracting data from our core platform and putting it into systems like Power BI so they can do end-to-end -end analytics of their entire customer experience. It's very hard for me to imagine another partnership quite like the Microsoft DocuSign partnership. We're partnering with Microsoft to bring the DocuSign platform to users all around the world. And um, please join me in welcoming uh, the DocuSign chief architect, uh, Eric Fleischman, on stage here to talk about their experience. Hey, Scott. Thanks for being here, Eric. Thanks for having us out. Cool. So, uh, you know, you guys are just having amazing success. And, you know, you made a big shift in the technology approach uh, that you built using your core platform. And, you know, what motivated this transformation? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so we, in late 2012, early 2013, we set out to really change the experience that customers had with DocuSign. Uh, the system was growing like crazy, and we wanted to get ahead of that growth. We also wanted to deliver an always-on, always-available system. At that point, like many enterprises had, we had you know, monthly maintenance and things that we would do to the system that were invasive operations. And so we set out to eliminate that, to eliminate monthly maintenance, to prepare our platform for 10x plus growth over the years to come. Um, and so that, that was really the beginning for us of, of transforming our platform to the, to the new world. That's awesome. Can you tell us more about your customer engagement and you know, how are you able to keep up with you know, the demands of both small and large size customers? And you know, what are some of their demands? Yeah, so customers, you know, the, the, DocuSign's a funny system in that it's used by so many different people. On the one hand, you have the largest trust-conscious organizations in the world that, that want to feel fantastic about entrusting us with their experiences and with their sensitive data. On the other hand, you have 
my experience, my personal purchasing, as was said in the video, of, of buying a home. And users want to be able to do what they need to do on the go with their transactions. And so we, we set out to use the latest technology that we could to get the best stuff in the hands of our customers. Um, and so that's where we picked SQL Server. We picked Fusion IO. We picked a, a variety of, of different technologies to, to basically bring together to deliver an always on, always available system for our customers. That's great. And you know, when you talk about uh, just the amount of data that you're processing, it's a huge amount of data. Um, yeah, how are you approaching this? So the, the joke I like to use on my team is, um, you know, if we have data to make this decision, let's use the data. But if, if all we have are opinions, let's use mine. Um, and so you know, it, it turns out that you don't have to say that more than once or twice before the engineering team gets on board with getting tremendous amounts of data. And so we've, in, in parallel with the system that you think of as DocuSign, that's processing transactions all day every day, we also have a second system running side by side that, um, that's ingesting 30 billion pieces of telemetry per day, 650,000 pieces of telemetry per second at peak of day. And that gives us end-to-end -end visibility over the customer experience. And so we set out to build that system to give us insight into what our customer experience was. But it turns out that customers were equally interested in that data. And so we actually help a lot of customers learn about their experience with the platform and what their customer experience is by sharing our telemetry with them. Cool. And you were telling me last night, 650,000 yeah, so we're, data points per second. We're ingesting 650,000 per second through the system today. Wow. Um, and that system runs in a hybrid configuration. You know, like one of my favorite things that, that Satya mentioned earlier and that you mentioned as well was this notion of some of it's on-prem and some of it's in the cloud. And while we want to use the cloud as much as we can, like lots of people, there's pragmatic realities that you know helping us get from here to there. And so that system is running on a combination of SQL Server 2016 back at home, as well as running on Azure storage using HD Insight and a, a variety of other technologies up in the cloud. Awesome. And obviously, you know, I think 10 of the 15 largest U.S. banks are using DocuSign today. Uh, and obviously, you have to meet very stringent regulatory requirements. Security is super uh, top of mind for everyone. Uh, you know, can you tell us a little bit about you know, how you approach that and, and how you think about security with DocuSign? Our, our customers are, are wise in that they understand that our security as a core platform is only a piece of the story. They not only need us to be secure from what you think of as a, a standard core platform security standpoint, but they also need to have an ex a secure experience that they deliver to their users on the other end. Um, and so we, we not only have to keep our system secure, but we then have to make sure that the users are who they say they are on the backside of these transactions, that people on the go can get the business done while in parallel, um, while in parallel ensuring that they are the users they say they are, and that organizations then can have a hand in that and see what's actually happening under the hood after the fact. Cool, and, and you know, what are some of the other reasons why other industries are adopting DocuSign as well? Well, so DocuSign's funny in that we're sort of this, this funny, we're, the, we're at this funny friction point between where the digital world meets the real world historically, where you have these phenomenal digital experiences that then like get printed and sent over a fax machine, right? And so companies like DocuSign, frankly, because we help them get things done faster. Um, the, the, the canonical example is always the sales agreement where you've got two hours left in the quarter and the customer wants to close the sales agreement, but there's just no physical way to move the paper around. Um, and so we, we, help them, we help them get that done. But to do that, we need to be up and running all the way to that last second of the quarter, which is why we've, we use Always On. We use a lot of these different things that you've talked about to, to help keep our platform running 24-7. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. It's great to see the success. Thanks. Thank you. you know, in the same way that uh, customers like DocuSign can use data to really enable them to better understand their customers and engage with their customers in a deeper way, uh, you know, the nice thing about uh, data is it also really enables you to fundamentally run your business more effectively and more efficiently uh, in a deeper way as well. And we're, we're witnessing this with organizations of all sizes, whether they're small businesses to very large businesses in pretty much every single industry, and uh, including some of the most precision demanding enterprises in the world. And you know, Formula One is you know, one of those enterprises. Uh, and they're using SQL Server uh, to optimize a business where literally every single second counts. And uh, let's show a video talking about their experience. I've always been into cars. I always wanted to go racing. I think I was almost born with it. You know, being able to work in it and being involved in the design is what I've always wanted to do. The thing that drives me is, I call it mission impossible. You know, trying to invent solutions. You do need a lot of organization within this company. If you haven't got the communication there, the, the structure in place, 
poor planning, production, you just end up in a mess. It's all about priorities. It's about tackling the, tackling the big things, the things that are most important first, and then trying to catch the other plates, hopefully, before they hit the floor. And the role that software plays for me is, uh, it's a very big role. It's in a lot of different departments. It's very heavily involved in our planning. We have to be very good at planning all the way from concept stage in, uh, in aerodynamics and computational fluid dynamics all the way through to the track. The average cycle time of the product is, is below the fortnight. So we don't have the luxury to say, Let, let's see tomorrow. Let's make another meeting next week. Uh, it doesn't work like that. And I think that's quite fascinating. And please join me in welcoming Thomas Mayer, uh, who's the Renault Sports Formula One team chief operating officer to the stage. That's good. Thanks. Thanks for being here, nice Thomas. Nice to be here. Yeah, thanks for being here. Hello. So it's, you know, it's an amazing story. Thank you. Uh, and a tremendous example of using data and intelligence to really run a high precision business and, um, and a team more effectively. Can you tell us a little bit about the process and the technology you're using? Obviously, in our business, uh, technology acts as an enabler. We, meet, we need to make the right decision at the right time. It's very important for us. So as before telemetry is, is of importance, we have uh, more than 200 sensors, more than 2,000 channels on a car. We sample at 1,000 hertz uh, sampling rate. So every thousands of a second, we are sending a data point back from all the sensors. So a constant stream of data is going back to the pit wall where our engineers are sitting, analyzing these data, looking if they are in the, in the right level of parameters. If not, there is a, an alarm triggered. So out of all of this data, we need to make a strategy decision. We need a split second. Do we pit? Don't we pit? Do we tell the driver to slow down, to, to speed up, to make decisions? And for this, obviously, we need a very comprehensive uh, integrated platform, which is very mobile, because as you know, we are traveling around to the world, and this is exactly what Microsoft is offering us. That's awesome. Uh, you know, can you tell about how all this technology is really helping you create the competitive edge? We try, in fact, to transform data into information and information into content. I'll give you a very concrete example. In the past, five years ago, we would go into a CFD, we would run all the models, as, as uh, Nick said. We create something like 100 gigabytes of data every hour, 24-7. Then we would go into the wind tunnel, produce a model car, the parts, test it again. Then we would build the real car, go to the track and test it. Takes time, lead time, and cost, obviously. Now we can do it very differently. Now we have all this data, so what were we doing? So we were virtually modeling, mathematically modeling the car as down to the screw. And now we still do the CFD an analysis, but then we go to the virtual model, we change it, we put our drivers into simulators, something like you're used from the air aircraft industry where the pilots learn to fly. And if the pilots can uh, access this performance which we are trying to give them, then only then we go back and build the physical part. So you can see we can shorten the lead time and we obviously can uh, save money. And it's all about the combination of these technologies, these kind of uh, possibilities to make better decisions, and uh, that's where we are coming from. That's great. And you know, can you tell us a little bit about the results? The results obviously are very, very important and always very publicly because we are a very public uh, industry. Uh, but it's in fact something about iteration. The more we can iterate, the faster we, we can iterate, the more performance we can extract. And it's all about uh, how fast we can do this. So Microsoft technology helps us really in terms of speeding up this process so we can get more out of the same timeline. And don't forget, we are also business. We need to extract also the best performance out of the dollar we are spending because we have not unlimited budget, even if you would like to have, but we don't have. So that's where we, in fact, really much rely on you. And the partnership we are having with Microsoft since more than five years now really enables us to push the envelope of the possible. So we are always want to push more and more and more. So we want to get the best out of a product like you offer, but we also want to push you guys in terms of offering us more. And that's where we are very, very happy to work with you together because we are a very highly dependent data-driven business and uh, you enable us to be better. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Thomas. It's Thanks, great to see God. the success. And just as data enables you to engage better with customers and run businesses more effectively, I think one of the most exciting things about data is it also really enables you 
uh, to transform products and services. And as Satya Kareh talked about earlier, you really create new business models and new whole ways of operating uh, in a much deeper way. And the foundation of this is really around intelligence, which comes from data. Uh, and in many cases is now coming from apps, from sensors, and from devices all over the world. And I want to talk now about uh, another customer that leads an industry where even the smallest detail uh, from a particular device that's, and the data that's derived from it can have a huge impact, and that's Johnson Controls. Let's go ahead and watch their uh, story. I've been a technician all my life, and working for Johnson Controls has shown me how the smallest detail can have a huge impact. You might be surprised to hear that buildings consume 47% of global energy, and about half of that is used by chillers. It's my job to keep chillers operating at peak efficiency, so energy costs and carbon footprints shrink. In hospitals, the wrong temperature in operating rooms can affect patient care and delay procedures, frustrating patients. With reimbursement dollars tied to patient surveys, unhappy patients can lead to lost dollars. By using Microsoft's data solutions with our smart connected chillers, I can monitor performance from anywhere, giving me the information I need to identify and respond to issues before they turn into costly problems. In colleges and universities, the cost of education has risen nearly 400% in the last 30 years, making cost control a hot topic. Through proactive maintenance, simple things like keeping tubes clean can reduce energy consumption by up to 35%. For a university with 250 buildings, savings could add up to $1.75 million annually. And in manufacturing, where elevated temperatures can quickly shut down a production line, uptime is everything. Using advanced diagnostics, I was able to proactively identify an issue for one of my customers and make a fix during a scheduled shutdown, saving them $300,000 an hour of unplanned downtime. Johnson Controls invented the thermostat in 1885, and we've been keeping people, businesses, and vital machinery cool, comfortable, and safe ever since. Now with the Microsoft Cloud, chillers are more energy efficient and buildings get more intelligent every day. The Internet of Things and advanced analytics help me make the world run more smoothly, safely, simply, and smartly. Johnson Controls and Microsoft. Keeping things cool. And uh, please join me in welcoming uh, John Cipolla, uh, who's the Johnson Controls Chief Commercial Officer here to the stage. Good to see you, John. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Johnson Controls and your role and some of the observations that uh, you've made about the transformations happening in the industry? Sure, thanks. Um, first of all, we, you got a little glimpse from the video about what we do, but we design, manufacture, and deliver the broadest portfolio set of products to maintain environments and security in buildings. And then we're involved in the whole life cycle of a building. So we'll install, we'll service, will support. So when you talk about, you know, uh, in my role in this is I lead the controls business for Johnson Controls. When you talk about transformation that's occurring, you, you saw one of our team members there, and even his life has changed given the remote access and the analytic capability we put in his hands. But that's also transforming at the facilities director level and the building owner level. Now, just a little more about transformation. You know, Johnson Controls has been doing IoT before it was cool. For five decades in buildings with building automation systems, been collecting data from thousands of sensors and processing it to, you know, optimize the environment we're in. But the big difference now is the cost of instrumenting more and more sensors and points in the building has grown, and the ability to take this data up and marry it with other data from IT records of maintenance over the last 10 or 20 years has been a phenomenal capability. And that's where Microsoft Azure and uh, SQL come in for us. We depend on it. We need somebody who can handle our scalability, reliability, and security concerns. So this transformation is what's happening in our industry. That's awesome. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about now also the impact that your smart con uh, connected chillers you know, are having on customers today? Yeah. So that big green thing you saw in the video is a chiller, and it fundamentally is the most efficient way to generate cool water, which you need to air condition buildings. 
That's what a chiller is. By the way, Thomas, uh, that chiller, I think the race car is 1,000 horsepower. That chiller is 2,000 horsepower. It just doesn't <laughs> move very fast. <laughs> so, you know, that's the first place we kind of trained our eyes big time on collecting the data and optimizing. So we've got uh, 3,000 and growing chillers connected, 5,000 rooftop units that you might see, and 100,000 other points. We collect 65 million rows a day, and that's growing as well, you know, on Microsoft's cloud. So what we've been able to do with that data is analyze it and prevent faults. So we've seen a 67% drop in the connected chillers of outage time. So a building owner can have peace of mind. A facility rex can have more peace of mind about predictable outcomes. We've seen the time when something does break to get back online drop by 65%. Warranty claims, as you might imagine, have gone down 11%. And the cost of the warranty claims of the connected chillers has gone down 31%. And lastly, I'll say we track our ability to renew service agreements with connected chillers. That's increased dramatically. So as of this month, we ship every chiller out of the factory with the ability to be connected. That's awesome. And yeah, I think you're also, we were talking yesterday about how this data is not only helping customers with better reliability and cost savings, but also changing how you do product development in a deeper way. Can you maybe talk about that? Yeah, it, it, it can and it does. So not just, we use the data coming off the chiller and also our repair records, and we've been able to isolate failure rates, predict failure rates, and so we know where to concentrate on building the next generation of product. But the other side of that is an increasing amount of our portfolio is based on optimization solutions. And there, this data is invaluable. So we just finished partnering with Stanford on model predictive control. So we're taking in data uh, from not only the equipment, but weather forecasts, class scheduling, to deliver the most cost-effective way to provide the campus with a safe, reliable environment. And that's going to correlate to sustainability as well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. This is just awesome. And it's, it's great to see you know, all these great products in action and the, the transformation you're driving the industry. Yeah. And thanks for your support. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Right. Awesome. <laughs> so we've seen you know, three great customer stories here today. Uh, and you know, you'll, you'll hear much more uh, throughout the event of other fa uh, fabulous uh, examples of, of really how people are taking data and using it to fundamentally transform their business, whether it's to engage better with customers, run their businesses more uh, effectively, uh, or really also just transform the products and services that they deliver in fundamental new ways. Um, you know, this slide you know, just shows some of the, the fantastic uh, companies uh, that are doing this work, uh, many of whom are here in the audience today. And you know, I want to say a big thank you in terms of just the, 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 uh, uh, being able to be part of your success. Uh, and you know, be able to be inspired by some of the fantastic things that you're doing. You know, people across Microsoft share the same passion uh, that I have and Satya have around data. And you know, some of these people have worked on our data products now uh, for literally decades. And some of them have recently joined from diverse locations and backgrounds. And as a close, what I'd like to do is uh, show a video introducing you to a lot of the people that worked on today's release uh, and um, hear their stories and um, some of the great things that they're doing as well. Thank you very much. Very few places in the world where you see this kind of innovation coupled with this kind of energy and scale. These are things that, as a, a technical geek and academic, I just love. Here I was sitting in my office right out of maternity leave and I'm thinking we are database people but here is this very fuzzy world of big data. So we have Hadoop that people are using. So how can we tie it together to the products that we have and make it accessible to our customers? It was just at one point one person's vision, idea on my whiteboard that is coming out today as a part of SQL Server 16. So that's exciting. It used to be that you would build software, thinking for a year, coding for a year, testing for a year. Instead, what we've been doing is engaging with customers early, before the features are even done, and using telemetry, both from our SQL Azure cloud offering and from SQL Server, to help us make decisions about the design of features before they're finished. We have been shipping the software in the cloud 
and on-premises. It's actually what we're doing, and no one else in the industry has done it. It's been really gratifying to see how much value uh, Microsoft has placed on open source and the open source community. I think it was unexpected in a way from a lot of the people that previously viewed the Microsoft ecosystem as being a very closed ecosystem. Today, being a very open ecosystem and reaching out into the open source community. The way I see cloud as any disruptive technology, it comes in, it disrupts, eventually it will become a commodity. And with the data, it's a similar approach. What we're doing is just building the software tools for people to be able to make sense out of it. Before, these tools were given to just experts. Today, you build the tools that a regular person could go crunch their numbers and make, again, an informed decision about it. And I think that's where the disruption comes in. Now with SQL Server 2016, your data is going to be safer than ever before. Your queries, your programs are going to run faster than ever before. And oh, by the way, faster than with any other system on the planet.